Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for today. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Thank you for joining us uh, for our Sunday service today. We know we are in a unique situation um, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. But God has given us ways to reach his people and we're doing that through our regular live streaming we believe God gave you a good night's sleep and you are awake to join us this morning the Lord bless you as you join us in our service the service as usual so um, be in the mind of worship in the spirit of worship wherever you are in your rooms bedrooms wherever it is just join us worship, join us pray, join us sing, join us dance. Do what you would do if you were in, uh, in church. We're having church right now. So we're going to start by calling upon our brother, uh, Albert uh, Elam, to lead us in our prayer. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are blessed to be in the presence of God this morning. And God has been faithful. How many of you believe that God has been faithful? Yeah, irrespective of where we find ourselves, irrespective of what is happening around us, we believe that God is still faithful. And he's going to make all things new in our life. Amen. All right. So before we start this prayer, I just want you to go within yourself and do a bit of meditation within yourself. Whether you are home, or you are here in the church just do a bit of meditation there are so many things going on in the world but you have been preserved the Lord has preserved your soul the Lord has preserved your body the Lord has preserved you and you have the peace of mind in the midst of all this the peace that surpasses all understanding I know it's not easy but I just want us to thank God for even the things that are happening because the Bible says that we should give thanks in all things. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence, O oh God. We give you all adoration, Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for even the things that are happening. We know that, Lord Jesus, you are taking control, O oh God. We know that, Lord Jesus, you are watching from the heaven. And we know that, Lord Jesus, you are causing good things to happen in our midst, oh God. We are trusting that, Lord Jesus, even in the midst of all this, we take shelter in you and nothing of the enemy shall prevail over our lives. We thank you, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you, oh God, for your love that has been distributed over. Even in the midst of all this, oh God, we give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. We lift up our voices, oh God, with our heart full of praise and worship. And we say, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord, oh God Almighty. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence, oh God. We thank you, oh God, even for the healing that you have released in the midst of all this in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise that, Lord Jesus, even the days ahead of us, oh God, is full of laughter, is full of your grace prevailing over this situation, is full of your healing prevailing over this situation. We give you all the praise, Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We thank you even for the future, Lord Jesus. We don't know what is going to happen tomorrow, but we believe in your healing power. We thank you, Jesus, for everything, oh God. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. There is nothing that we can say say this time oh God but we know that Lord Jesus you hold oh God the solution to everything with you all things are possible we are trusting you oh God for a transformation we are trusting you oh God for a change in the midst of all this we give you all the praise we give you all the praise we thank you Lord Jesus we come into your presence oh God not with our own minds, oh God, but with the minds of heaven. To give you all the praise, oh God, because our minds are focused on the things above. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, Jesus. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your love. We thank you, oh God, for your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for the awesome things that you are doing in our lives, oh God, that you are even about to do. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus, for your presence.
Come on, I just want us to lift up our voices. Let's just enter into another realm of the spirit. Let's enter into another realm of the spirit. If you can speak in spirit, come on, if you are home, oh God, let there be a transformation in the home. Let there be a stirring up in the spirit in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter where you are, but what matters is the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. As we know the Lord, oh God, even as we don't have people here this morning to worship, even in our homes, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, we know that your presence is there. Even as we lift up prayer, oh God, let there be a change. Oh God, let there be a change. We speak your possibilities in the midst of your possibilities in the midst of all this in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus. Even as we begin the service, oh God, we pray for your presence. We pray, oh God, the Lord Jesus. Even as we begin to minister in songs, in the worst, oh God, whoever is struggling with this coronavirus, oh God, even with the symptoms, oh God, even people who doesn't even know of the symptoms, in the name of Jesus, incubation system, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing in bodies, in the nation, everywhere in this world, in the name of of Jesus, Lakatosha, Rabeka to Shadabaha, Rabato Shataka. But even even if you are home, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let there be a change of atmosphere wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Rabo Kata Shataha, Repa Labatosha, Rabandelebe Shata, Repato Shataha, Reandabatoshi Adabahosha. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, release a kabosha, rabo ida basuta ka, reanda basu sete. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we declare in Jesus' name. Come on, church, if you believe in me, say Amen to that. Amen. We declare in the name of Jesus. We are going to continue to pray. We are going to pray. I mean, that feeling that you are home and so nothing is going on. We are going to pray that even from the altar, whatever word that is ministered. Be it through songs, through, be it through the word of God. It's going to minister in, unto everybody that is listening. Whatever is going on in their lives right now, we are going to pray that the Lord himself will cause restoration in their lives, will cause peace in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I know there are a lot of things going on and thoughts running through our minds and things getting to discourage us, fear coming in. But we are not moved by fear. We know that we serve a living God. That at the mention of the name Jesus, it doesn't matter how strong the virus is. It doesn't matter where you are. As a matter of fact, we serve a living God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can imagine. Just put your trust in Him. That even as we begin to minister by song, by word this morning, there shall be transformation, there shall be release of peace into the life of people. There shall be release of comfort. There shall be release of deliverance. Come, come on to our voices and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lebo shada bake bradu shada behekesha. Rabandi bos ikada baso takadi yambada doshe. Rabandu ki yada bado shada bare kada balo shada baha. Rabenda baso takabre shata la bado sha. Randele bede be shata bakosh iyanda bado sha. Rabandi kapro shada behete. Labande kapro ilabande si kaya da bado sha. Rabandi libi yada bado shata baha dasha. Rianda bakosh shata bahende de de sha. Spirit of the living God, oh God, your presence in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Your presence, oh God, your presence, your presence is healing, your presence is restoration, your presence, 
Jesus, we call upon you this morning. We speak it in the name of Jesus. Let there be a shaking. Let bo kabatosha. Raya da 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 do shabraha. Randa la babo shetelebe. Rape kata la babosha. E ande de 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 shata. In the name of Jesus, we call on you, O God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that your presence will do something new in our lives, O God. We pray for those who are home. We declare that, Lord Jesus, there shall be a visitation even in their homes, even in this nation, even in this world, O God. We declare that, Lord Jesus, in the midst of all this, let the glory be given to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's time to worship, to sing praises and, and honor to God. And I believe you got your, yourself ready by that prayer. God bless you, Brother Albert, for that powerful prayer. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 93 that the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Somebody can take refuge in that. God has established the world so that it cannot be moved. With all that is happening, you can take refuge in this. That God is in total and absolute control. Your throne is established from, from of old. You are from everlasting. We're going to worship this everlasting father this morning. Hallelujah. And how many know he's able to do anything, whatever it is that we can ask or even imagine. With all that is going on, fear and panic may have, may have arrested your heart. But we have good news for you. God is able to do. So trust him, believe in him, hallelujah, amen. Oh, God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able, yeah, 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 yeah. He's able, come on, join us, worship the name of the Lord. God is able to do able to do just what he says he will do he's gonna he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God don't give up on God because he won't give up somebody say it he's able able to heal you to protect you. Say it again. He's able. Yeah. Come on. Say it again. God is able to do. God is able, able to, to do just what he said. He what he said in his word, he will fulfill it. He's gonna fulfill every promise. Whatever he promised you, don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Do you know it? He's able. Come on. I know God is able. 
say it again. He's able. Oh. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. You could ask on me. According to the power that works Kath in you, in you, God is able to do so. He's able to do just what he said. Safe. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Oh. Cause he won't give up on you. Say it by faith. He's able. I declare God is able to keep you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Say it again. He's able.
Come on and bless the name of Jesus, somebody. Worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we believe that things are already better. Amen. Do you believe that? Now you can dance with me. Come on. Get up from your seat, from your bed, and begin to dance to the Lord. Hey, ma, 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 Come on, come on, come on. We say things already better. Things already better. For the Lord is on the throne. Things already better. Things already better. Things already better. Things are better. Things already better. Things already better. For the Lord is on the throne. Things already better. 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 You can trust in the Lord. He's on the throne. Mambo sawa sawa Mambo 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 sawa sawa Yesu Yesu wakiwa Yesu mambo sawa Kita lode sawa sawa Kita lode sawa sawa Atina ye ye Atina ye ye Atina ye ye Yesu kami ho Yesu Christo Omega, 
Bless the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh soul and worship your holy name bless the lord say For my heart 
205. Bless the Lord, say, bless the Lord, oh, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Worship his soul.
pandemic going on but I know that spiritually there's a different global pandemic going on how many of you know that the church right this moment we're in revival hallelujah the infectious power of the Holy Spirit is sweeping the globe right now Hallelujah. God is moving by his spirit. Signs and wonders in his moving. We're in a new day. We're entering in a new dimension. Hallelujah. There's a Holy Ghost pandemic going on. Hallelujah. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. Don't fear because God is here. God has already showed up on the scene. God is moving. Hallelujah. That's why no harm can come nigh you because you're under the shadow of the Almighty. You're under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. A new thing is taking place. A new thing is taking place. Yes, God is doing something new. Hallelujah. This is our time of prayer and consecration before God. And in my spirit, the Lord is placing this in Matthew 9 and verse 16. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined, but they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Already at the beginning of this year, we enter the year in prayer and fasting. How many of you know that we were already prepared for this? We were already prepared. You see, what we carried with us last year cannot come into this year. The clothes that you wore last year, the, the clothes that you wore in the last season, because you may not know, but you've entered a new season, cannot come. Be worn in this new season. God said, behold, I make all things new. He's doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? Can you perceive it? God said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now you have to have the mind of the spirit. You have to have the eyes of the spirit to see that God is doing something huge globally. While people are watching the virus, we need to be watching the move of God because he's moving right there in your family. That thing that you've been praying for for years, watch it take place in your life. Right there in your finances, that breakthrough that you've been waiting for, 
what should take place. God is doing something new. Hey, right there. That healing that you've been longing for. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. For God is moving. That struggle in your marriage. That thing that you couldn't break through. Hallelujah. Watch it. You have a new love in your heart. God is doing a new thing. Your children that you've been praying for. That breakthrough in your family. Watch God. He said, I'm doing a new thing. So in this time, right there where you are, make an altar to the Lord. Say, God, I take away the old clothes of last year or last season. I put on new clothes, new garments, a spiritual garment. Lord, I thank you for the eye salve that you've given me so I can see in a new way. God, blow your fresh wind. Your fresh wind moved by your mighty fire in our houses, in our homes, in our lives, in our bodies. That miracle that you've been believing for. God has opened that door. Do you perceive that the door is open? That means you need to walk on through that door. Walk on through. God has made a way for you. That's why you cannot take fear with you. Fear has no place in this dimension. Fear has no place where God is taking you. Can you perceive God? You cannot perceive God and fear. Just perceive God. Know that he's moving. He's moving. He's moving. So right where you are, say, God, pray, make a prayer. Pray that God do your new thing in me. Whatever you have for me, right in this season. Hallelujah. Don't do it without me. Lord, hallelujah. Wherever you're moving, God, I'm moving. Whatever you say, God, I'll do. Hallelujah. Whatever you say, I will obey in the name of Jesus. Your worship. Hallelujah. You cannot worship in the same way. You cannot worship in the same way. God, say, God, give me a new jump. Give me a new shout. Eh, put a new song in my mouth in Jesus' name. So, thou, Father, we give you praise for what you're doing in our church. Even as we're getting ready to relocate physically into a new building, there is a spiritual relocation. There is a spiritual relocation. You're relocating us in the spirit. Hallelujah. Move us, Lord. Shake us. Do your new work in us. Hallelujah. We give you praise and we give you glory. Can you right there just give God praise for what he has done in your life, in your family, in your finances. Can you just tell him thank you. Give him praise. Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing. He's moving in a new way. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to give God thanks for two lives tonight, this, this afternoon, this morning. Both Nathan and Trevor had birthdays on the 18th. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. When somebody celebrates a birthday, it means that they're alive. It means that they know the faithfulness of God. We're going to pray for these two. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Nathan Bonpuku and Trevor Grizzle II. Thank you that your hand is upon them for good. No evil shall befall them in the name of Jesus. But these children are blessed. This young man is blessed. Hallelujah. These men of God are blessed in the city, in the field, in their coming and in their going. Thank you, God that you crown them with favor. You'll keep their feet. You will touch their hearts. You will help their ways to be clean and cleansed before you. Thank you, God, that they are leaders and they are not followers. Thank you for your blessings right now that covers them in Jesus' holy name. Favor, they'll grow in wisdom and in knowledge of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' Christ. they have favor in their lives. Amen. Oh, and I will follow you forward. Come on now. Sing, you may not be through. You may, you may not be through. You may not be through. Come on, sing the song.
made things new. Amen. Praise God. We thank the praise team for that powerful section. God bless you, praise team. And those who are home, uh, we want to say that on behalf of the leadership, we want to say a very big thank you for a listening ear. And we want to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit here. And also acknowledge the presence of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Grizzle, and the wife, and also our assistant pastor, Pastor Wanda. Can we just give it up for them to acknowledge the presence? <laughs> and on behalf of them, I would like to welcome everybody here today and everybody listening to us online. We want to say that stay tuned and you will be blessed. Amen. Now, let's just listen to the announcement as quickly as, and then we can take note of the following. Just quickly, uh, our vision is serving locally and reaching globally. And if you are listening for the first time, Hope International vision is serving locally and reaching globally. And our theme for this year is moving onward and upward. Hallelujah. So we believe that we are moving onward and upward in everything. Amen. That's how come God is doing something new in our life. Amen. Our mission is exhort the Lord through vibrant spirit-inspired worship, evangelize the Lord through spirit-led witness, educate believers through biblically informed teachings and preachings, and finally equip believers for kingdom living and ministry through Christ-centered and apostolic precepts and example. Hallelujah. Let's take note of the following announcement. Morning prayers in the church has been put on hold, and there will be no Bible studies this week. Uh, further notice or further information will be communicated earlier on. Amen. And this week, we are still going to be having our Thursday prayer. Uh, so please join us on the prayer line this coming Thursday from 8 p.m. to about 9 p.m. The number to call is 605 313 6088. I'll go over again. 605-313-6088. And the short code or the access code to that is 265-810. So if you want to join us online to pray, this is the line you should call and the access code as well. And uh Due to the directive with respect to the coronavirus, Dr. Grizzle and the leadership of the church regrets to announce the cancellation of the IRISE conference. Amen. I know this is going to be a big blow to many of us, but it's just for a good for everybody and for the church as well. So let's just take it and pray concerning all these things. Amen. And we're still expecting to take occupancy of our new facility on April 1st. So we are still working in respect of what is happening around us. We are still working on moving forward. Amen. So we are still taking occupancy of our facility on April 1st. And then please remember to give your pledge. Last week we made a pledge towards the moving and so if you pledge to give something and you have not given it yet, if you have taken envelopes and you have not given it yet, uh, we want to encourage you to start giving online. You can go to our Hope International Ministry website and then go to the give section and give online. Or, or you, can also mail, you can also mail your envelopes, the envelopes that, that were distributed to you. You can also mail that to... Hope International Ministries, 8086, South Yale, South Yale Avenue, P.O. Box, 175, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the zip code is 74136. Um, 
yeah, I'm going to go over that again just for us to take note of that. So, if, if you want to mail your pledge to us, you can mail this to Hope International Ministries, 8086 South Yale Avenue, P.O. Box 175, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 741. Three six, so let's try as much as possible to put this to work. Hallelujah, Amen. And so this marked the end of the announcement. And I would like to call. It's offering time, so I would like to call on uh, Hope International Ministry Praise Team to lead us to give the offering. And if you're home and you want to give, you can go to our website and then at the give section on the menu bar. You can go there and then give towards this cause of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Albert. Please take note of those announcements and um, um, follow through with it. Give by mailing or whatever way you want to give uh, hope in Tulsa.org is our um, website um, um, address so you can get there and you can give find the give button and give amen the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver amen and we are grateful to give cheerfully and so right now you can give or you can write your offering lift it up to God father we pray in the name of Jesus for every seed that is being sown right here wherever it is being sold through um, our giving through the website through uh, giving on the phone whichever way it's been given we thank you you know the hearts that is coming out of and we pray that you bless those home and bless those people God you will take care of your people in the time of distress we know in this times God many would have to not go to work some people are uh, have been laid off and, and all sort of things happening and they are concerned but we thank you that you will supply every need of theirs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus for those who still have their jobs we pray that you'll be with them and protect them as they go to work let your name be glorified in their lives and father we thank you that you would not leave us nor forsake us we give you praise in Jesus name amen, amen. let's praise the Lord as we give Demons tremble, demons tremble at your, your presence. presence. 
What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All the children bow. All the children bow in worship. Everything. Your presence. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, 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 our God's children serve. The power we worship. Everything, everything, everything written about you is great. So you are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Oh, Lord. Excellent in power. You are great. Everything. Everything about you. Come on, shout it with us one more time. We say, You are great. You are great. You are great, yeah. You are great. You are Lord of great. great. Nobody compares. You are great. You are the mighty, mighty one. You are great. Excellent in power. You are great. Everything written about you is 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 great. Father, we give you praise. You are worthy of honor and of praise. Bless every seed that has been sown in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Amen. Let's give, a, give it up for the praise team again. It's time to hear the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word of God is... Is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. The Bible says, Jesus spoke to his disciples. He says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. In times like this, our lifeline is the word of God. And so we want to, wherever you are, we just want you to settle. And just settle down and receive from the head pastor of our church, Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle. Let's receive him as he brings the word of God to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Take your Bibles and everything and receive the word. Praise God. I want to thank Pastor Wanda for that wonderful praise and worship that uh, you led. And... Um, it was just like the church was packed. So I thank God for that this morning. We are living in times that are unprecedented, it would seem to us. And perhaps you are shut in on lockdown. But we thank God we can come to you still in this format. We hope it won't be too long before we get back to normalcy. Possibly another one or two weeks. But we shall get back to the formal way of worshiping in the, the sanctuary. We'll be in our new place, no doubt. But we thank you for joining in with us online, live stream. Today I want to speak to you from my heart. What God has been impressing on my heart for you and for all of us. Let's pray, shall we, first. Father, we give you thanks this morning and praise for the wonderful presence we feel right here. Your presence is so rich and so real. And we thank you, O God, for 
visiting us this morning. We praise and glorify your name. You, the one and the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Now, Father, be glorified in the speaking of your word today to your people. Make hearts receptive, O God, I pray. I pray you'd feed their souls, give them exactly what they need today for the praise of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning from a few scriptures. In light of what we're going through right now, I just want to read a few scriptures, but I want to begin with Psalm 46, a psalm that I've already sent to you for meditation, for your reading and meditation, Psalm 46. It's a psalm that speaks to our situation, and the psalm describes a world that is even in a, was in a uh, worst state, worse state than we are in r r right now. The psalm is said, God, Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Let me pause there and say, what was the psalmist saying? You see, the way the ancient peoples understood the, the world is that the sky was held up by the mountains. The mountains held up the sky. So if the mountains give way, fall into the sea, it means that the sky comes tumbling down to kill people. But he continues, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. So he's saying that the waters, the, the boundaries of the land have been removed and the sea comes in, the oceans come in and flood the land. It means there's nowhere, nowhere to go. The sky has fallen, the oceans have come and uh, overwhelmed the land. Where shall we go? What shall we do? Life pretty much has come to an end. It means your world has caved in. Things cannot get any worse. But the psalmist said, God is our refuge. Amidst that, when all of life crumbles, when the world falls to pieces, it crumbles, and there's no place to stand, the psalmist says that God is our refuge and strength. So this morning, where you are in your home, no matter how bad things look, of course they can't look as bad as things are in the psalmist's mind here, but remember God is our refuge and strength. It means that we are protected. We are surrounded. We are guarded by this great God who rules the universe. Notice further it says, look at verse 5. God is within her and she sh shall not fall. God will help her. This is Jerusalem. God's special city. Nations are in uproar right now. Nations are in uproar. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. Yes, the economies of many nations are falling. Many nations are crumbling. God lifts his voice. The earth, the earth melts. But listen, the Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So God is our refuge and strength. God is our fortress. It means we are kept protected. We are kept safe as the people of God. Therefore, we shall not fear. Now, the situation in which we are in around the world 
can wreak fear. And even Christians are fearful. It's, it's a time with one of two things, one or two responses will take place. Either we respond with fear or with faith. Either we panic or we trust in God or refuge and strength. Which will you choose? Fear? Will fear help? But faith in this great God of ours will take us through. So, could God be speaking to us through what's going on? Or is God speaking to us? I want to say boldly, I don't believe that God has sent this virus. He's not a God like that. But God can use this virus to give us a wake-up call. It can be a call to examine and re-examine our priorities. What are the things that are most important to us in life? What are these things that are important to us in life? God can use this to wake us up. Because sometimes we, as a pe we, the people of God, can be just like the world. We go along, we drift along, and we forget that this great God is calling us to something greater than just living day by day. That we've got a mission in this world. That we are pilgrims in this world. And we must use our lives and invest our lives in God's kingdom's work. So, this global pandemic, it has gripped the, the world with an iron grip, really an iron grip. It's strangling the world. I was speaking to someone, uh, so, sorry, I, I, I texted someone even across the pond and they were saying how fearful they are because the virus is just creeping and more people are becoming ill. And even in Africa and different places, it, nearly every single nation in the world is impacted by this virus. And so there's a fear. I was speaking to someone yesterday also. She said that um, she went to the mall to buy something. The lines were horrendously long. And people were just in panic. And so she saw this one woman really e even trembling about what's going to happen. And she said, do you have a relationship with God? She said, oh, yes, yes I'm a Christian. Then she said, why are, you, why are you worried like that then, if you're a Christian? <laughs> We're saying that even Christians are fearful. There is no need to fear. God is our refuge and strength. So we can't join the crowd. If we're the people of God, it's time we stood out and say, God is our refuge. We are in a different class of people. If they can't look to us for hope, to whom shall they turn? So we ought to be people of faith. But this, global, this pandemic has brought the world to a screeching halt. So in every country, every country, some persons affected. The global economy has tanked to where they're saying that there is going to be a great recession. 20% of even this country's uh, economy, they're saying 20% may be, be, uh, be in play, they're laying off 20% of the people, so 20% unemployment, which is pretty high. But I don't believe all of that. I think God's going to take us through. But some are predicting this global recession. Several states are already on lockdown. California, New York, Washington, and there are others following. They're in lockdown. You can't go anywhere except for special reasons. Lockdown. So you look at New York's, uh, the streets of New York, uh, it's like they're like ghost a ghost town, you know? You look at LA, different places, uh, Nevada, you know, Las Vegas. It's like a, uh, the, the casino is all shut down. Life has come to a standstill, as it were. And we're saying, what's going on? We've never seen this before. So even our city here, we're in lockdown. Not more than 10 people should gather. 
our very church is affected. All the churches are affected in some way in Tulsa and across the country. Schools, colleges, universities, all closed. Teach online now. Yes, even I have to do that. My worst fear has come upon me. Stores and businesses closed. When have you ever seen that in your lifetime? I've never seen that in my lifetime. Have you? Have you all who are watching? Sports stadiums and are arenas, all closed. So March Madness, thank God that madness isn't happening. <laughs> The playoffs, the NBA playoffs, golf, uh, tennis, name it. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. So we're saying, where do you get your entertainment? Where do you, have, where, where do you get fun? You know, where do you go? I see on TV many reruns. Basketball, tennis, whatever, reruns for the special events uh, of go bygone years, you know, that's what they're showing. TV talk shows and all the shows we, we like to watch. Mm -mm. Reruns. American Idol. Well, that must have been taped a long time ago. You know, uh, the night shows, talk shows, no longer. What do you watch on TV now? Old reruns, right? And churches, most of churches are closed, even in this very city. In my reading of church history, well, just history period, there's only ever been one situation that was worse than this. The Spanish flu. 1918. It went on for two years. It affected, they said, half a million people. Sorry, sorry. 500 million people. Sorry, forgive me. 500 million people. Huh? That's half a billion, yes. And they're saying that between 10 to 30 percent of Oh, 10 to 30 million, sorry, people died. It was worse than this. But the thing is that they got through. God took them through. It means that what's happening here is not here to stay. Can you hold on till the change come? You can hold on because God is with you. God shall take us through this. God will take us through this. Hold on because the change is coming. What about the Black Death that ravaged Europe? 300 years, for 300 years, this uh, death, Black Death continued. They said 10 to 30 percent of Europe's population was wiped out. We thank God that this, that isn't happening to our world. But we're saying what we're living in is very critical. It's very critical. But I can't leave it just there. I'm saying. What is God saying to us through all of this? What is God saying to you? Do you think this is just happenstance and therefore it, I'll just wait till it passes and continue my life the same way I've been living all along? Or is God saying, as my wife said, press the reset button about your life, your relationship with God and family, your Bible study, your spiritual life? Is God speaking to you through this? Are you going to come out of this better or worse? I think what God is saying to us is that I am in charge of this world. I'm on the throne. Because you see, man today with technology, all the know-how, the knowledge, some believe we rule the world. We are in charge, and God says, no, one small virus, I'll show you who is in charge. God is in charge. 
he will shut the world down if he wants to. When he wants to. You don't, you don't dictate to him how this world goes. God is in control. God is in control. And the world will not come to an end if God says it's not time. God has set a date in, the, in, the, in his calendar when he says it's time to bring the whole thing in to an end, you see. But God is in charge. And because God is in charge, I needn't worry. Man can't bring this world to an end. To us, I think God is saying, because I am in charge, I am your father, don't be afraid. Don't worry. Don't panic. I am in charge. I am not only God the Almighty, but I'm your father. There's a special relationship we have as father to child, to son, to daughter. Therefore, if I'm in charge, let me be the one to panic if God ever, ever panics. So I want to read a few scriptures. Listen to what God says. This is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear not. Fear not. For I am your God. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, I don't, I've never counted myself. I've heard it said that there are 365 references to do not fear in the Bible. If that is so, then for every single day, there is a promise that God says, don't fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It is very easy to let fear cripple and paralyze us in situations like this when God says, no, there is no need to fear because God is in control. Whatever the situation is, though the earth be removed and the mountains be thrown into the sea, yet God is our refuge and strength. In Isaiah 43, listen what God says to Israel, who they were in captivity in, Babylon, in a strange foreign land. They were on lockdown, can we say? Locked in, locked down, no way out, no future, no hope. Listen what God says to Israel, Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, and Jacob means Israel. Put your name there. He who created you, Marine, K. Put your name there. He says, but this is what the Lord says. He who created you, he who formed you, Israel. Again, put your name. Jacob is the same thing. Put your name there to me. Okay. Don't or do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. For I have redeemed you. That means I have bought you. I've brought, I've bought you with a price. I've redeemed you. I have called you. I've summoned you by name. God knows your name. God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your name. You are mine. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze like Daniel. I mean, those three Hebrew boys in, in, in the fire furnace. 
For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Look at verse 5. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. So I'm saying, all of you who are listening in, if you are prone to fear, to panic, God says, do not be afraid. I know your address, I know your name, but I got you, even he says in Isaiah 14, uh, 9, I've written you on the palm of my hands. I see you every single day. And you're in my heart as well. See, God has you in the palm of his hands. Not only your name, but you. And you're the apple of his eye. Amen? Another scripture. This comes out of Philippians, which you know also well. Philippians 4 and verse 6. You know the scripture also well. Where Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, it means even the situation you're going through right now, when you're locked in, locked out, locked out, perhaps there's no work for you to go to, you can't go to school, business is bad. He says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, look for something to give God thanks for. We're saying even in the darkest situation, God is saying there is something you can thank God for. Don't just look at the negative. Is God there? Is God, has God got a blessing somewhere? Has God blessed you in some other area of your life? He says, Present your request to God. And verse 7, And the peace of God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice, don't be anxious. And how do you stop anxiety? He says, you pray in every situation. Make your petitions known to God and be thankful also as you pray. Pray and thank God for something. Because Thanksgiving is saying, God, there is sunlight, a ray of light somewhere here, even in the darkness. Present your request to God. Present your request to God. There are certain things we cannot carry. There are certain burdens we cannot carry alone. Pray saying, God, I release, I release the situation to you. You take over. You are God. I am not. You are a refuge. I am not. I notice the peace of God then. You can have peace. In the midst of the storm, though the earth be removed, though the mountains fall, you can still have peace, God's peace. This peace transcends all understanding. <clears throat> and if we as Christians then can show this peace to the world, they look up to us and, and, and say, there's something different about you. Tell me about this peace. How can you be so peaceful in this intemperate time, these intemperate seas? How can you maintain your peace? You keep your head straight. You keep your mind sane. How do you do it? God's peace. It passes understanding. But it comes. It comes. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place that sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. When we come to him and call upon him and know that this God is our father, no matter what, his peace comes sweeping in 
filling our hearts and minds. The winds can be on the outside. The waves can be on the outside. But on the inside, his peace fills our hearts and minds. And people are wondering, how can you be so peaceful when the winds and the waves are tearing apart your life on the outside? Or oh, the outside is so restless. His peace. It will guard your heart and mind. It means it will, really means it will act like an umpire. It will say, this one, out. That, out. Out. The umpire in a game. You, you call the shots. You set the, the rules, right? It's there. The rules are there. You're carrying out the rules. Okay. That's what it means. But I, I want to get back and be on time to close, but God in all of this situation can also be saying to us, Who do, to whom do you look as your source? To whom do you look as your source? At, 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 as your source? Well, okay, so I don't have a job right now. I, things are bad. And God is saying, well, do you provide for yourself? Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, they don't reap. And yet Solomon in all of his glory was not so arrayed and bedecked like one of these. Look at the birds. They don't sow, they don't spin, they don't gather into barns. But look at them. The chirp and they're happy every morning. God provides. God provides. God is our source. Is our refuge of source is our source. Look to God. Commit your ways to Him. Yes, if the money isn't there, keep praying. It's gonna happen. The breakthrough is coming. I'm saying it won't be this way always. God is at your source. God knows your situation. And just like with the Israelites that were in Egypt, there was famine all around Egypt, everywhere in Egypt, except in Goshen where the people of God were, there was no famine. We're saying God knows where you are. God has called you by your name. He knows you by name. He knows your address. He knows where you live. We're saying then that God will take care. Don't panic. Don't panic. Then I think God is saying to us, who is most important to you in life? Who is most important? Your friends? Even your family? Or do you see God as the most important? Your family is, is important. But God should be the center of your life, the very center of your life. And this time, as my wife said, God is saying, press that reset button and consider your relationship, your walk with God. You're shut in, right? You're locked uh, on lockdown. What? Are you doing with that time? Are you fretting and worrying, watch, watching reruns, you know, housewife, what all these shows are? <laughs> these all, re all reruns? Are you taking time to talk to God? Are you taking time to get closer to family? To your wife, to your children, to your husband? Are you taking the time to get closer? There is that place for social distance, but not with your family. This time it's saying, get closer, not be pushed away, because we can be so busy. During the, the, the regular time we are at work, we are ru we're, we're running in this rat race to work and this and that and the other thing. We don't take time for family, but God is saying, it's time to think now of the importance of family right now. Hit that reset button. 
focus on your family, your children, your husband, your wife. See? And again, I think what's coming out of this is what gives you the greatest fulfillment? Is it watching the basketball games? Watching soccer? Watching tennis? Around the world, all the stadiums are closed down. All the sports are closed down. Are you saying, God, life has come to an end for me because I have no fulfillment now? Do you find a fulfillment in sports or in God? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first. In him, in God alone, is true fulfillment. So, in this time, as you're in lockdown, do you spend time, more time in the word, reading his word, being filled with his word, feeding on his word, Basking in his presence, do you spend time? We're saying, friends, as I come to a close, spend this time re-prioritizing your priorities. Also, don't just think about yourself during this time and think about how bad things are with me. But think about others who are less fortunate than you. Yesterday I went to a home, a single, a widow, just lost her husband in May. She is not a member of Hope. But I thought about it, I've been praying for her. I called. Do you have any need? Anything we can meet, help you to meet? Any need we can help you to meet? I said, I know that there's, there's shortage of certain things. Can't get certain things at the store, grocery store. She said, oh yes, I, I need um, this and that and the other thing. So I took it, these things over to her and she said, how come you thought about me? Not a part of your church. And my church, he said, doesn't even do anything like that. They're just saying, please don't forget to bring your offering even though we're closed. Still send in your offering. No, there are many of you have sent, we've sent letters, we've sent different things, texts, we've sent videos. We're saying, what need do you have that we can help to meet if we can. We're going to try our best. I'm saying, think about others. Many are maybe in a worse situation. Think about those people. Don't just think about yourself and have a pity party for yourself. Think about others and your joy will be full. Amen. So I'm saying, at this time, God perhaps is waking us up. He's saying, church, you've been asleep too long. Wake up. And even the absence of people from the sanctuary, God could be saying there are other ways to connect with others in worship, in prayer, calling others, even this time, because sometimes we are so busy, we ignore other people. God is saying, it's time to connect with each other. The only thing you can take back to heaven with you is relationship. You think about it. The only thing. Make those relationships strong. Strong. 
in Jesus' name. So, don't let fear control your life. Let faith, trust in God, trust in God. Don't trust in anything else, the economy, the president, people. Trust in God. He's your source and he's all that we need in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Juan, do you want to come take over? Thank you. As we close. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was a powerful word. Amen. We praise God. Amen. Let's praise him wherever you are. Just praise the Lord. And close your eyes with us as we pray or just um, observe this time of prayer with us. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. You are good and your mercies, they endure forever. Thank you that you have been our God in ages past and our hope for years to come. This is not new to you and it's, it's not a surprise to you either. You know all things. You have all power. And you have said through Solomon recorded to us that if I shut up heavens that there is no rain and if I command the locusts to devour the land and if I send pestilence among my people, but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I, God, would hear. I would forgive them and I will heal their land. We're living in times that, Father God, we're calling upon you as your people. We humble ourselves before you, God. All ac across the globe, the many coming back to you, the many prodigals, the many who have turned away and have given themselves to their own ways coming back to you, God. The revival coming back to the hearts of the ones that are sleeping, waking them up. That it's time to wake up. You are still God in the midst of this. That we will turn from our wicked ways. We have given ourselves to new age philosophies and things that have infiltrated the church and the truth has been put aside. Have mercy, O oh God. Help us turn from our wicked ways when we have become lovers of ourselves more than lovers of God. We've become lovers of money more than lovers of God. Paul says in the last days perilous times will arise. We are seeing it happen. The one thing we know that those who know they are God, they will be strong. They will do exploits. So we thank you that you are with us. And we pray that you continue to be with us. Hear our prayer as we seek your face. Forgive our sins and heal our land. We pray for all those who are sick with this virus, those who have been affected with this virus, not just here, all across in China. We pray for Italy today. We pray for all these other nations who does not even mention you as God in Iran, Iraq, in all these places. Let God arise and let them know that you are mighty. In this, show yourself strong. You are the only one that can do anything about this. We thank God for the doctors and, and all the research folks that are trying to find vaccine and, and medicine and whatever it is to take care of this. But our prayer is God, let your name be glorified. I pray, Sovereign Lord,
that you pour down an anointing upon those who fear your name that as we cry and pray you will heal them that have been affected by this virus in Jesus name because we know you are the healer let the world know that you are the healer the God that heals us Father we believe and we'll continue to believe that we are safe in you, God. And come what may, your name will be glorified. We pray for wisdom for precedence all across the globe. Right here in the United States, we pray the wisdom of God for the president of the United States, Donald Trump, and all his people as they try every day to make sense of what is going on and to keep the nation calm. We pray wisdom for mayors of cities and for governors of, of states. We pray wisdom for leaders of institutions and, and schools and, and leaders of, of organizations and businesses and all that decisions that have to be made. We pray, Jehovah God, that your wisdom will be downloaded into their spirit. Whatever decisions they make will be in accordance with your will. And we pray for the children of God all across the globe. The let a revival break forth in our homes, God. Whilst we've been quarantined, we pray that revival break forth. We will arise with prayer. And I decree over you listening to me that since you have made the Lord, even the Most High, your dwelling place, your refuge, no evil shall befall you and no pestilence shall come near your dwelling place in the mighty name of jesus the lord bless you and keep you the lord shine his face upon you and give you peace may you be safe may your blood be immune to this virus in jesus name i decree it again that your system will be immune to this virus. We decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. The God who commanded Israel to put blood on their doorpost. The same God is with us. And this time it is not the blood of bulls and lambs. It is the blood of Jesus. And we pray that by that blood it shall pass over us in Jesus name. The Lord bless you in all you do. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon and keep on loving and blessing the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thing so we'll be giving you information on bible study prayer and all those things as time goes on god bless you and have a blessed week amen